And in today's tutorial, we're going to talk about subsurface scattering and how to make use out of it to get more control over objects absorbing the light. By the way, the stylized leaves, the assets, the textures, and even the substance file to check out are going to be available for free in the description down below. So what scattering color allows us to do is basically it allows us to imitate the light bouncing within an object using a texture map. So first things first, we need to set up our substance painter to allow us to use the subsurface scattering. And for that, we'll need to go on to texture set settings. And within the channels, we need to add a channel called subsurface scattering. If you're not seeing it within your channels, make sure that texture material you're working with is set to PBR metal roughness. So let's go ahead and select this one. And now within the channels, if we click plus, we'll find ourselves scattering color. We're not going to use just scattering information since that only gives you black and white color information. And so we wouldn't be able to attach any of the color values to it. So we're going to use scattering color instead. So that's going to be added onto our channels. Now we can go back onto layers. I have some texture set up or these stylized leaves, but they don't have any of the scattering color information yet. But for us to add that, well, first of all, let's click on the base color. Let's make sure that this is selected. And within it, we'll need to enable scattering color channel like so. By clicking on this button over here, we'll be able to get ourselves scattering color. In order to see it within the Substance Painter material view, we'd need to go into the shader settings and scroll down a little bit until we get to the subsurface scattering parameters. We need to make sure this is enabled and underneath the scatter color, we need to make sure it is set to scattering color channel. With this on, since we had the scattering color set to black, it is going to be now black. But we're going to change that in a bit. Also, the scattering type if you are working with more organic shapes, I recommend you using skin. Or there is even an option to set it to translucent. However, personally, I don't really like working within the material view. And instead, what I like to do is change the material view into the scattering color. This way, we're going to be able to texture ourselves an object using the scattering color whilst actually seeing what's going on with the texture map itself. So now, our default color, let's go ahead and select a bright green. This type of color like so. This will do us quite well. Now that we have the base for our scattering color, our next step is going to be is getting additional color information layered on top of it. And the first thing that we're going to do is make use out of the thickness map which is usually the best thing to make use out of when creating scattering color, since we're able to determine where the light will go past an object. So if we were to go on it and then add scattering color, well, before that, I'd like to show you what the thickness mask looks like. And this is basically it. So the bits that would be thicker would have a brighter color. And so we're going to be able to make use out of it. I'll go back now onto the scattering color. And now, for this, we're going to make it actually, for this, we're actually going to darken it up to ensure that the scattering color is going to be much darker in an area where the leaf is thicker. So that's what we're doing right now by setting up this green, dark green color. Now the next bit is I want to have in between actually be darker since that's where the veins of a leaf are. And so for that, we're going to make use out of the curvature detail texture. We're going to add a scatter color. And for this, we're going to just darken it up. Yes, this type of color will work really well for us since we're able to get some extra detail for the veins. 
and then we can move on to the ambient occlusion one we're going to make use out of this type of mask that's been generated by baking and we're going to create hold on let me just go back on the scattering color and we're going to be making some additional color detail for it so i'm going to select the material go into the scattering color and for this i reckon we can get some yeah this will work really well for us i like this let's go ahead and leave it now we can also add some additional detail let's say from some dirt and whatnot so we're going to use this crunch dirt layer we're going to select it add a scattering color and now we're going to just get some dark brown like so actually this might be a little bit too much since this is for a scattering color we don't want too much detail we're basically just telling that the dirt on the leaf is not going to be transparent as the rest of the leaf so this will do quite well for us then going up the stem so this is just a basic stem that i have masked out on the back we don't want this to be transparent and so what we're going to do is we're going to add a scattering color and mask it to a value that's close to black it doesn't have to be entirely black just close to a dark color the type of scattering color texture map that we need to make is we need to imagine how an object would look like if it's directly under a light so if we look from the top it might look as if an object itself is being shined with a light underneath it and that is exactly the type of texture map we're trying to get now if we render out our object we're going to get this sort of result but now we can go ahead and save this and we can go ahead and export the textures let's go ahead and click export texture for this one i'm going to use document channels normal plus ao with no alpha i'll just select this make sure that the file type is png and with the output directory selected let's go ahead and click export these are the types of texture maps we're going to get we're not going to need a height map since we're not using that let's go ahead and delete it we're going to use base map uh, metal is going to be black but we're still going to be use it ao and normals depending on which flow you are using if we're direct x or opengl you're going to get either one of those since i'm planning to use it for unreal engine i'm going to get the detail exported onto my direct x if the normals look wrong for you whenever you're rendering out your item just make sure to invert your green channel and that'll fix the issue because that's the only thing that's different about a direct x and the usual normal map and then roughness and scattering color we're gonna get those as well all right now that we have some leaves imported with the textures with an unreal engine 5 i also repositioned them just to make them look a little bit nicer we're going to do some slight comparison for the scattering color okay so what we're going to do is create a quick material and for the scattering color we need to make sure that the blending mode is set to sorry not the blending mode the shading model is set to subsurface this will allow us to make use out of the subsurface color which is essential for what we're doing okay so now that we have this on we're going to go ahead and import the textures and i'm just going to attach them real quick to the appropriate channels now for the scattering color we're just going to drag it inside of our unreal engine and attach it to the subsurface color this way right away if we hit ctrl and s to save it then if we go out and apply our material we're going to get this sort of result now the one on the right is without subsurface scattering and we can already see the difference in how it's being affected by the type of light 
if I were to rotate my light around, you can see how the leaf itself is absorbing the color. When I'm working on creating subsurface scattering color, I usually don't really worry about how bright or how dark the texture itself is. I just worry about the color information and where the darker and brighter areas are located exactly on the mesh. That is what is going to be used when using scattering color. Since that is going to be affected by the type of lighting we're using within our environment. So for example, if let's say I want to remove some of the shadows underneath and lighten them up, I could, for example, increase the indirect light intensity. And let's say for this example, we're going to go to the extreme and set it to 40. You can see the type of difference that the subsurface scattering is doing. It lights up the area underneath and almost makes the leaves glow. But of course, we don't really want them to glow. So what can we do? Well, the easiest way to fix it is if we go to scattering color, underneath adjustments, going to move the window to the side. If we were to change the brightness from within the adjustments from 1 to 0.1 and darken up the texture entirely, we're going to get this sort of result. So that's one way of controlling the subsurface scattering for our objects. Another thing that we should also know is that the subsurface scattering often uses opacity masks as well. And instead of attaching a different type of texture, what we're going to do is make use out of the subsurface gathering texture. And we're going to attach a red channel directly onto the opacity channel like so. The reason we're attaching red is usually that's the one with the most contrast within the channels out of the three, out of the red, green, and blue. If we were to go underneath it and get some lighting moved, and now if we have light going across our object, we're going to get this our result. Of course, if we want to darken it, we can go and adjust the brightness. So let's say I wanted to make it less, less transparent. We can totally do so by using the brightness adjustment like so. Naturally, the amount of light that goes through depends on the intensity of the light. So, for example, if we were to set it to 20 and brighten up our environment, we're going to get a different type of result that shines for an object. So now, if we were to, for example, lower the brightness to 0.2, for example, we're going to get less light as well. And that's all there is to this quick subsurface tutorial. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to check out our other content as well. We do 3D models, online courses, and also give out free PBR textures. We do all that and more. All the links can be found in the description down below. Thanks for watching.